Minister, with you. Um, a lot of work has gone behind um, collecting data that really is at the forefront of the work that you are going to be doing. Please do take us through the statistics, the numbers, so we get a good insight as to what the potential is for, for travel and tourism um, in the country. You know, what, what, what is the data telling us, we, we, telling us first, and then we can discuss what it is that we should be doing. Yes, the data certainly is showing that uh, we are moving. I think there's still room for improvement. And that, you know, getting back to the pre-COVID-19 levels and also attempt to exceed those levels is what we need to be seized with uh, in partnership with the public and the private sector civil society in our communities. I think we can find that unity and work in unison and not government working in a silo, private sector working in a silo. A trust deficit between public and private is not good for our country. And, and my role will, bring to, will be to bring us together and so that we can first and foremost say our priority is our country first not whatever entity you belong to or whatever business you belong to, but putting our country first. So yes, I will be giving you uh, the stats this morning for the first quarter of 2023 from January to March. And I must say there's some interesting uh, dates, I mean data. So data is good for planning and for strategizing. But we tend always to stop thereafter. So I think we need to take the data and each sector, as part of the tourism sector, need to say, based on this data, this is what I need to do in the next three months so that I improve in the second quarter of the financial year. But it shouldn't be used to sit and analyze, overanalyze, to a paralysis of lack of implementation. That is going to be the challenge for all of us, is to use the data effectively and plan according to that data. Yes. I'm sure you'll be getting ready to, to present um, from the podium and, and perhaps while you get ready, it would, be, it would be great to hear from you. I think as a chief executive officer, what is the tone that we are needing to set? You know, what are the key messages that for you give you clarity on what we're needing to achieve for South Africa? Well, uh, first of all, I think we, we need to acknowledge that um, uh, in the past we used to have data very, very late. And there has been a huge improvement uh, that uh, we now have data very fast. We're already talking about, you know, uh, much data now. Uh, in the past, we used to wait for six months, Minister, uh, for the data to arrive. And it's not good for business planning. But there's been improvement from Home Affairs, from State SA, from South African Tourism, to make sure that the data comes very fast. Because we use data for planning purposes and being able to say where do we target, which markets we need to be focusing on, what are the trends happening in those markets and so forth and so on. So it's quite important for us that this data becomes available as fast as possible for us to target and to put more resources in, into those markets to get more tourists coming into South Africa and impact the economy of the country. So for us, data is everything. And for business, uh, in anything that we do, whether it's a strategic planning, whether we're planning on, on sales or we, we, we're trying to adjust pricing, data is important because we know where people are coming from. We know how much they're going to be spending. We get to understand what's going on within the source markets. We get to understand the sentiments from those source markets. So it's quite important for us. It's a big, big thing. And we, we look you know, forward to this speed of data coming to us and for us to plan so that we can achieve what the minister have been saying uh, for, for the past few days. We can work together, we can get more tourists coming into the country, we can impact the economy of the country and alleviate poverty you know, across the board. 
You touched a bit on you touched a bit on strategy. I mean, it's it's not easy at all. Data informs strategy, but then we also have the South Africa agenda and the South Africa context and the imperatives. And, and it's a unique environment that we are in. Um, we're not analysing the data from a, a, any other country, not a, not a Dubai, not a, not a, a any other country from a South Africa um, sensitivities. So so what are your thoughts, um, Robert, in terms of? Uh, what for you has been critical about the sourcing of this data just before we go into it? Yeah, no, thanks, thanks a lot, Zanele, and, and, and good, good morning uh, or good afternoon to, to, to the audience. Uh, good afternoon to the minister and to my fellow uh, colleague here, Chfiwa. You know, we, we live in a world where data explosion, all of us as we sit here, we're being bombarded with data. Um, and I think if you are in the business that we in, it's always very, very important to understand that with all this data explosion coming your way, what are you supposed, where do you focus on? So for example, South African tourism, we look at the key trends. So if you look at what has happened over the last three months with the growth of the arrivals in the country, with the growth of the arrivals in the continent, and looking at what's happening at a global level, then we're able to push and pull the levers. It helps us to be nimble so that we can focus on the right markets with the right things based on what the data is telling us. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, um, what has happened over the last three months, and the minister will share that, we have actually um, increased our arrivals to incredible levels. We are almost close to the 2019 uh, arrivals, um, if you compare to where we are today versus 2019. But what's important is what are the insights that are coming from the, the trends that we're picking up? And what do we do as a DMO to make sure that we push and pull the levers to be able to compete? We don't only collect data for South Africa, we collect data for the African market, right? We collect data for our competitors, the long haul markets. What is it that they're doing in those markets to actually accelerate the 2019 levels? What can we learn from this market for us to be able to recover quickly? Yes, there are estimates that we'll get into 2019 levels in 25, 26, 27. But you don't want to wait until 26, 27. You want to do it as quickly as possible. So we need to learn from the market, uh, our competitive market, to be able to, to adjust our strategies as well, to be able to recover quickly. For us, that's very, very important. Thank you so much for laying the foundation for the conversation, um, as well as for uh, the Tourism Data Minister. Over to you to please take us through the international and uh, domestic quarter one 2023 results. Fasten your seat belts for a lot of numbers. Thank you, thank you, Program Director. I think what is important also about data that we must remember is that when we release data, we must make absolutely sure that, they, that we release audited data. And then secondly, to me, the source of the data is also important because you hear different figures floating around all the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I want to start off with explaining the, the methodology of how we arrived at these figures first. And um, to give you some comfort that we are looking at the time frames to shorten what C TBCSA is saying, shorten the time from when the data becomes available. But the data does also help us to do some projections also. So we will today brief you on the first quarter of um, 2023 with the latest tourism statistics for South Africa and also showcasing our country's resurgence in the international travel market. So the data that we are using is sourced from reliable authorities, as the, as such as the, the Department of Home Affairs, which collects inform, information from all our ports of entry into our country on a monthly basis. Then Stats SA, also a South African entity, refines the data in line with international standards and classifications to subset the tourists. Then South African Tourism, the entity 
of the Department of Public, I mean, Department of uh, Tourism. They carry out a monthly survey involving the departing, uh, departing foreigners at Oatambo, uh, Cape Town International Port, uh, Airport, and, and all our ports of entries, for instance. And then the arrival data then from Stats SA is then used to weight the survey data for quantification of the trip characteristics, such as the length of stay, the spend, and the purpose of the visit. So this enables us to then estimate international tourism contributions and value from a demand side. So in summary, the arrivals data we present is the same as STATS SA. So South African Tourism Entity, under the Department of Tourism, Departure Survey stands as the only official survey in the country capable of measuring these statistics. This departure survey has undergone also the STATS SA process of quality certification and also the South African Statistical Quality Assessment Framework, the SASQA Framework. So it's gone through all of these processes. Now, we all know that the pandemic undoubtedly left a dent in the tourism industry. But we are back, stronger than ever, and get to catapult um, our inbound tourism numbers beyond the pre-COVID-19 levels. And achieving this momental task requires a united front. With government and the private sector and all tourism stakeholders joining forces to redefine the travel experience that can help us to grow um, to grow our, our, our figures. We, we think and we see that the world reawakens, has reawakened. Tourists are flag flocking back to South Africa, enticed by our unparalleled beauty, but also the warmth of the people of South Africa. It is one of our greatest assets. So we are sending a message out to the rest of the world that South Africa is open for business, for tourism business. We welcome businesses to our country. And we are eagerly awaiting tourists from around Africa and the globe. We've seen in 2022, between January and December 2022, heralded a resurgence with nearly 5.8 million visitors gracing our shores, including 4 million from Africa. And this is a stunning increase of about 152% up from 2021. We are not yet there before we start bragging. We are not yet there at the 10 million arrivals in 2019. But rest assured, our tireless collaboration with the private sector and collaboration with Africa will take us there in, and even beyond in no time. Now let me turn to the stats for the first quarter of 2023 from January to March 2023. In the first quarter, an impressive, impressive 2.1 million visitors, a 102% increase compared to the same period in 2022. 
Now, whilst we are still 21.5% lower than the 2019 levels, we are gaining ground, but we're not there yet. And the continent, the African continent, uh, continent led the way again in this first quarter with 1.6 million arrivals, followed, followed by Europe with 387,000 arrivals, and the Americas with 104,000 arrivals. So the world is definitely rediscovering South Africa, and together, when we work together, we can certainly surpass the pre-COVID-19 level. So our determination must be unity. Because that will make the burden so much lighter on both government and the private sector. Now, from a domestic perspective in South Africa, we have seen an incredible resilience with the quarter one performance, surpassing the pre-pandemic levels and those of quarter one of 2022. Then we also measured the, the foreign spend and also the impact of the tourism market. In the first quarter of 2023, the foreign direct spend saw to an outstanding 25.3 billion rand marking a 143% increase compared to quarter one in 2022. Tourists from Europe contributed the most spent of 10.8 billion, followed by Africa with a collective spend of 9.3 billion. So the overall foreign spend figure for quarter one this year as close to 25.6 billion rand spent between January and March of 2019 and showcases the industry's unwavering resilience. We also witness a remarkable growth in spending from our African visitors. If I can start with Zimbabwe and Mozambique. In quarter one, Zimbabwe quarter one figures reaching 4.4 billion, up 50% on our 2019 levels, followed by Mozambique with a 1.1 billion, also above 12% above our 2019 levels. However, Spent from our UK visitors dipped by 27% to 3.2 billion rand, while visitors from the United States of America contributed a robust 2.6 billion rand, searching 28% above the 2019 levels. A significant driver of these remarkable figures is also as a result of the lifting of travel restrictions during COVID-19 and of course, affordability. After two years of restriction and confinement, travels are eager to, eager to explore wide open spaces and South Africa offers this in abundance. Let me turn to the top source markets and the travel trends in quarter one. Zimbabwe maintained its reign as South Africa's top source market, a trend that is consistent with 2019. Over 500,000 Zimbabwean travelers journeyed to South Africa between January and March 2023 compared to 643,000 in the same period in 2019 and only 173,000 in 2022. That is followed by Mozambique, 
as the second largest source market, boasting of just over 354,000 arrivals just between January and March this year. And next in line were Lesotho, Eswatini, taking the third and the fourth spots respectively. The United Kingdom claimed the fifth position with more than 118,000 arrivals in South Africa between January and March 2023, a decrease of 135,000 compared to 2019. Germany, the United States of America, Botswana, Namibia, and the Netherlands round out the top 10 source markers markets for travelers to our countries, to our country. So across the board, um, we have seen about a 102% surge in total arrivals from 2022 to 2023 first quarter. Again, reflecting South Africa's at, uh, attractive market. If I can turn to the number of bed nights, as also recovered in the first quarter, but not to the level of pre-COVID 2019. Total bed nights amounted to 28.4 million in quarter one, this being a 3% decline over quarter one of 2019, but a 124% increase compared to 2022. Another promising trend is the 11% increase in the average length of stay in quarter one compared to quarter one in 2022. Visitors are spending more time exploring South Africa with the average stay reaching 13 days in quarter one, surpassing the 11 days of 2019. So this again shows that South Africa is ready to welcome our visitors with open arms. If I can briefly deal with the geographic spread and the travel destinations, South Africa offers a diverse range of captivating destinations for travelers, with Gauteng taking the lead in international arrivals, spend and bed nights. In, some international visitors tend to spend most of their nights in the Western Cape, followed by Gauteng, followed by the Eastern Cape, the Northern Cape, KZN and the Northwest also draw tourists to their unique charms. While the smaller provinces in our country currently see fewer visitors, we also want to encourage tourists to visit our smaller promise provinces. There are lots of hidden gems, gems, as you can see on the floor behind us. South Africa's diverse landscape also promises a treasure trove, an unforgettable experience for travelers. Then South Africa versus the other long haul destinations and global trends. Here again, we have demonstrated a remarkable resilience of growth, outshining other popular destinations like China, France, Italy, and Brazil. Now, despite the 44.3% drop of arrivals in 2022 compared to 2019, our nation achieved an outstanding 141% increase compared again to 2021. I won't use a lot of figures. And it's 2021, then 2022. Now, the greater landscape in the world has posed many challenges, and it includes inflation. 
the rising prices of energy, the Russian-Ukraine conflict, leading to economic constraints worldwide, not just in our country. And as a result of these challenges that we are facing, we must market ourselves more aggressively and exploit all the avenues to expand our reach in major source markets like Africa number one, Europe, China, the United States of America, the UK and India. Let's focus on all of those source markets and design strategies that we can grow in all of them and not single out one or two where we can just get immediate big numbers. That's not a good strategy, where you focus on all, all, only the big ones because you can get hundreds more tourists. But if you focus on all the source markets and pay your attention there and grow all of them together, I think we'll have a better input. So embracing travels from every region is also essential with a particular focus on Africa. Destination marketing trends emphasize eco-friendly activities and accommodations, as well as the inclusivity of the LGBTQI plus community, communities. I've seen them on the floor yesterday become a big international market. So collaboration with local businesses, with cultural organizations, community groups, is the key to creating accessible and diverse tourism experience. Let me quickly deal with the air access routes. Air capacity has risen since last year with a 56% increase in quarter one of 2023, compared to the same quarter in 2022. In 2023, in the first quarter, we reached 1.8 million seats, and South Africa welcomed 23 new routes. We've got the new direct flights, such as the Cape Town to New York, New York, and Cape Town to Washington by the United Airlines. Uh, Air China has resumed their uh, direct flight to South Africa, our Tambo. And then the upcoming Latham uh, flight from this Brazil to Oliver Tambo International Airport contribute to our nation's appeal. And then our own airline, South African Airways, expansion into various African markets also further boosts our attractiveness. In terms of the aviation supply, seats from the Americas doubled in quarter one of 2023, surpassing the 2019 levels. So you can, the direct link to this increase is because of these new flights between ourselves and the USA. And then the Middle East has fully recovered in outbound travel and Europe has introduced also five new airlines and routes to South Africa. On the domestic market, we saw domestic overnight trips exceed pre-pandemic levels in 2022 by 41%. Over dom overnight domestic spend was also up compared to quarter one in 2023 by uh, 24%. And the average overnight spend was down 11.7%, signifying that South Africans took more frequent trips and spent less. The total number of nights spent away from home 
reached 27.9 million. And this was a 32% increase over the same period, same quarter in 2022. The average stay of, of the average uh, length of stay per trip fell by 5.7%, highlighting the global trend that travelers now opt to take shorter and more frequent trips than before. So the domestic trips um, in South Africa in the first quarter it's up by 40.5% compared to 2022. And these holiday trips represented a 27% share of total overnight trips. Then the expenditure from holiday trips in quarter nine was 9.5 billion compared to 7.9 billion in 2022. There was also an increase in the, of 12.3% in the MICE trips, the meetings, incentive, incentives, conference, and exhibitions taken during the first quarter of 2023. The South African National Convention Bureau sales team has won 40 of the bits that they've submitted in the 22-23 financial year. And these secure businesses pieces will contribute at least 338 million to South African economy between 2022 and 2025, and will attract a healthy 16,000 visitors to our country. In addition, the South African National Convention Peru also invested 19.2 million rand in submissions through its support, support programs to attract business events that's also linked to national government's developmental priorities. The secure conferences will also contribute to regional spread of business when people go after the conference into the region. So the ones that we have secured uh, for South Africa include the International Congress of African Photomedicine, Phytomedicine Scientific Society. We've also secured the South African Neurological Association Conference. We've also secured the Global Association of the Exhibition Industry, their global conference. And these events will be hosted in Johannesburg, Tuane, Hammanskraal, Cape Town, Bloemfontein, Durban, Mahupong, Mildersdorf, and also even Peter Maritzburg. So returning to domestic numbers, the day trips grew by 26% to reach 44.7 million. And we see it's mostly people visiting friends and family, and the top three provinces where this is happening is Gauteng, Limpopo, and the Eastern Cape. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, our numbers are moving in the right direction with focus action on improving our visa turnaround times, increasing air access, ensuring the safety of our tourists, and an aggressive marketing strategy. If we get those things right, and if we are determined to get it right, we will certainly see even a bigger improvement improvement in the second quarter. So once again, I believe working together with all stakeholders, we can increase the number of jobs that we can create through tourism in our country. And let me thank our, um, our friends from the fourth estate, our valued media partners, 
thank you for covering the travel in Daba. Thank you for being here from Ireland. Um, and from all over the continent and all over the world, uh, we appreciate your assistance and helping us to further market South Africa and Africa as a destination for the future. So thank you very much. I told you it's going to be long. I'm also not tired of speaking. Thank you very much and God bless. Can we have some water for the minister? Thank you so much. Minister, thank you so much um, for, for really going through the critical elements of the presentation and of the numbers. You know, you, you've, you've gone into new roles at a regular, on a regular basis and, and probably one of the most seasoned ministers we have in stepping into an environment and then being able to, to really push to deliver results within the period that you are there. So in the, few, in the few weeks that you've already been in the role, you must have now, also supported by the data, clarity of what perhaps the three things will be um, that you would like to focus on that will fulfill the mandates um, of, of, the t of this particular ministry um, as it tries to and has to create an enabling environment. What would you say are the three top priorities that you've distilled thus far? Well, I've got not three, I've got four. <laughs> but they're all not in any order of preference. They're still all number ones to me. The one is that we had to unlock the Tourism Equity Fund of about 1.2 billion rand because the funding was stuck in the legal system for over a year, for over 18 months. Well, the good news is that on the 26th of April, we were able to settle that court case through my intervention with senior counsel and the state attorney. And we're now able to, to reconceptualize how we're going to spend this fund. But I've also made sure that government alone is not going to decide here. We do need the input from the private sector. And then I've asked uh, Tourism Business Council of South Africa to give us some idea and some options and also some of the uh, SMMEs. And that should be concluded by the end of May. The second priority for me is that not only in South Africa, but in the whole of the continent, we have to deal with this visa systems. And it's not just in South Africa, it's all over the continent. It's either too expensive, the turnaround time can be anything between three months to a year. And so we have to work closely with in our case with Home Affairs, which we've started doing, after three days in the office is my first meeting with Minister Mutileri. And I can see some progress there. South Africa has just added another 20 countries to our e-visa system. But we still have to do a lot more work on the visa exemption countries. There we are still negotiating with a number of countries. And the third priority is that there are a number of future tour operators. We need to increase that. It will also help us to, with transformation. But the tour operators need to get a license to operate, but they need the license from the Department of Transport. And so we've unlocked that now. Um, there was a backlog of over a thousand. That backlog has been erased, but only five, 514 of the applicants collected the licenses. So I'm calling on those ones who did not collect for whatever reason to come and get your licenses. We get more tour operators in. The bad news is that we, we now, again, we've got just over 415 in a backlog. So we are busy unlocking that Turn, trying to shorten the, uh, the turnaround time, but also in the interim to stop the harassment in the provinces by provinces and local government of tour operators. So the notice that will come out from Minister of Transport is that 
that when you've applied for a renewal of your license, that you will have a note to show that I'm waiting on the Department of Transport to issue my license, and therefore no harassment and no arrest. So I'm meeting with all the MEC tourism um, tomorrow, and we're going to have to fix that together. So there are great potential for growth. Now you see, that figures have now made me to forgot my fourth priority. Zara? Three was good. This fourth but one. We, we. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. You talked about policies. Thank you for that. We spend our time, our time and our lives with designing policy and strategy, but we need to move on because once you have got your strategy and your plan, you need to have a structure and function follow. And that's our weakness we need to now just implement. So South Africa's uh, tourism recovery strategy that we have all with the private sector adopted in March of 2021. My task now is to use what we have agreed on, and there are only seven pillars, and take that and turn it into a tourism master plan. So we've got a master plan for tourism and then just implement. So that is the fourth priority. Thank you. And how excellent it is that uh, you already have your master plan as the job has begun, because the biggest challenge is the constant changes and starting from scratch every time a new minister it gets on board. So I'm appreciating that you've worked with a lot of the content that has been developed. And really, Minister, our biggest challenge I'm not going to change anything. It's implementation. I'm not going to change anything. It's the same government. Why should the new minister come in and try and change everything? Yeah. The job is to implement. They're holding themselves from doing a round yes. of applause and clapping. No, we that. just have to implement now. <laughs> yes, we should. We should be there to implement. Let me give you a bit of a break, uh, Minister, and, and come to you as the CEO. When I look at the stats, it tells me that we are a sweet spot for the Africa market. And it, it stands to reason. And even COVID showed us how flat, and as much as there are 54 countries, Africa is ours to conquer, and we are a beloved part of the African continent. How are we recognizing that and creating, um, creating easier access? You've got the challenge of, it's really tough to travel across the continent. You know, and SAA's, um, fewer routes across the continent has not just made it difficult for us to travel across the continent. It takes me 20 hours to get to Senegal, you know, which is absolute, doesn't make any sense. You, you zigzag, you go to Dubai every time you need to travel. So it's a big challenge for, for, African, for Africa's travel, is, is the airline. The second part of that is, 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 a, is, a, is a lack of proper and appropriate partnership amongst ourselves across the continent um, to ease business travelers, because it's business travel mainly. If you look at the fact that they're staying here for more than 11 days, it tells me it's business traveling coming into South Africa. Are we able to change our mindset and position ourselves where we come from, which is the African continent? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think the African continent, uh, as the numbers uh, speaks for themselves, it's a critical market for us here in South Africa. It's a market that we need to increase, grow, or we need to defend some of the markets that we already have, uh, especially in the SADC region. And you're quite right, it's not as easy for us to work together as a continent to unlock the potential that this continent has from tourism point of view. Uh, I, was, I, I attended the meeting where the minister hosted uh, other uh, African ministers of tourism who are here to talk about the issues and the challenges that we have across the SADC region. And from the private sector point of view, we, we have what we call the private sector tourism platform, which we started you know, with all the apex private sector bodies from each country to say, how do we work together with government to unlock the potential of tourism in the SADC region? The same thing is happening in East Africa. The same thing is happening in West Africa. So there is huge potential. And some of the challenges that we have 
uh, you know, issues around airlift and connectivity across the African continent. Of course, we need to keep in mind that majority of, 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 of our citizens are unable to earn enough money to, to fly. But we need to work on the ground infrastructure as well, rail, roads, to make sure that people are able to move across the African continent with a cheaper mode of transport uh, than focusing only on you know, air travel. So if we have a train that could leave from Cape Town to Cairo, a lot of people will travel and trade will improve. And also we talk about issues around uh, the Africa free trade continental area, uh, which means that the issues of tourism has to be infused into that to make sure that the movement of people the visa regimes across you know, the, 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 the African continent are eased. And one of the quick things that we can do, you know, we have countries that have a rigorous system when you apply for visa. If you want to go to the US, when you're African, you want to go to the UK, Europe, you go through a process. And many travelers already have visas to those other countries. We need to figure out a way of recognizing those visas when they travel their own country. There's no need for someone who has a U.S. visa, as an example, who lives in Lagos, they want to come to Johannesburg or they want to go to Harare, that we still need to issue a visa for them. They've already gone through the process, yeah. and we should be able to figure out a way of recognizing those visas and get more tourists to come into, into the country. So I think the figures and the statistics uh, that the minister have, have, uh, have, have um, read out are quite encouraging. We have seen in the private sector that um, uh, there is an increase in spend, People are staying longer. Uh, and we've seen that uh, you know, accommodation sector is really reaping the, uh, you know, so some benefits you know, post-COVID in terms of the income going into, into, into the, uh, uh, the accommodation sector. So it's positive. We will get more people to come back to the industry. We need to remember that we lost many uh, people that left the industry because we were not operational. And I think that now that we are seeing that there is improvement, we're going to see more and more people coming back into the sector and will contribute greater you know, in terms of uh, uh, you know, employment. So we need to keep on that. And for, for us as business, we are keeping on that. We will continue to, to trade. We'll continue to look for ways to make sure that we improve on the statistics. We have more people arriving into the country. We have more people spending you know, money on, on, you know, on the ground. We always say uh, you know, in the private sector that when the tourists arrive here, the biggest thing that you've got to figure out is how to stay in their pocket. Make sure that they spend as much as they can and make sure that you know, they boost local you know, economies and uh, you know, local entrepreneurs on the ground. Thank you so much. Sorry, just to add into what you just said. Sorry. Um, just to we can't hear you. Can we just have his mic on, please? Just to add what uh, uh, Shifua said in terms of um, other modes of traveling coming into the country. In, in, in light of the recent air access challenges. So the data is, is very clear. Um, out of the four million arrivals um, in South Africa in 2022, <clears throat> and if you look at the top countries, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Lesotho, Eswatini, Botswana, one thing that is very clear is these are land borders. These are people that are coming here, not using air access. They are coming in driving with buses and all of that. Uh, and that shows how critical the land borders are uh, in the midst of the air access challenges that we face as a country. And the top 10 of our source markets, seven of them are actually our neighboring countries. And that shows how critical uh, other modes of transport are for people to come into the country. So some big challenges for Minister, one of them includes uh, infrastructure, you know, the, the, the ease of access to the roads via the borders. But I, I want to stay with you, um, Robert. I, I believe that um, and I appreciate that we are moving into looking at the continent and, yes, coming closer to home. But tourism, when it comes into the country, who is it empowering? Who is it serving? Who gains from it? For me, this speaks to sentiment. You know, the challenges that we've seen in your, in your sector in the last couple of months speaks to the fa fact that we have a, a public and a community and a society that is feeling neglected in the decisions that are being made by our entities. You know, when you go to Kenya, you buy a bracelet, you, you eat Kenyan food, uh, the, the restaurants are owned by a broad array of its citizens. 
we, how, how are we starting to make sure that when we are attracting and we're looking at initiatives, it's for the broader good of the South African society and not an elite only who can afford to, to do major meetings, to do uh, major concerts or races, but yet, yet a person in the township, in the townships where most of our people stay, they don't get to benefit um, from our efforts, yet, yet it's, their, it's their country as well. Is there an intention to, to make tourism about Africa for Africans and all Africa for all Africans? So, so your, your question is, is a very broad question and it covers a whole lot of uh, areas. Um, one of the studies that we do is what you call the economic impact of tourism. And, and you know, think of a tourist coming from Germany, coming into South Africa. This tourist flies Lufthansa, they book their ticket in Germany and that money stays in Germany. But as soon as that tourist lands at the, at, the, at the airport, and they start spending money. And you look at who are the people that are employed to where that tourist is spending money. A simple thing like a cup of coffee, for example. Where does the coffee come from? The economic value chain of one tourist coming into the country, entering the borders, getting into a taxi, going into a hotel, eating at a restaurant, the, 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 the impact of that when you multiply by 5.8 billion tourists. That's where we get our spend, our foreign direct spend. I think um, last year, the average tourist in South Africa spent about 12,000 rents per, per, per tourist, if you think about it. So you multiply that by 5.8 5, 5 million tourists. That's where we had a foreign direct spend of 59 billion in 2022. Um, it's very, very important that as people sit and they think about the economic value and what the tourist means to the country, to the economy, to someone who works in a hotel. We are here today at Indaba. We are going to do a study in terms of what is the economic impact of this event. And you will be shocked at the millions and millions of friends that the people that are here for a week are going to inject into this economy, contributing to the GDP of a Tequini contributing to the GDP of KwaZulu-Natal and subsequently contributing to the GDP of the country. And, and that value chain is very, very important. And it's also important that as we want people to come into South Africa, us as South Africans, we must also start traveling into African countries because as we travel, we actually get to realize how African other people in African countries are treating us as tourists. And we can replicate that so that we can actually become an attractive destination because Inclusivity. Yes. And if you go out here on the floor here, there's an organization called Satu Vitu. Mm -hmm. They represent tourist uh, establishment in townships, in small villages, in dopies, all over the country. I had a meeting with them two weeks ago. Very impressive work. They've got a database and they've got membership in all nine provinces. And they are here today where they are able to showcase um, what is happening in those areas. Now, to make the benefit of tourism more inclusive, there is a growth in tourism, but it's uneven. Mm. There's not this inclusivity. So the, the duty of TBCSA, of SAT, is to see how we bring that sector into this value chain. It's uneven, and we, we have to admit it. And I think we also have to acknowledge that we need to do more to, to, to grow that inclusivity that, that you're talking about. Thank you. And, and not only grow, but to measure it. Yes, because yeah. because Minister Robert is very right. The German the, the, the German tourist, mm. he's he's set. He knows where he's going to live. He's going to live in the city centre. He's going to live in Santon. Yes, he's going to go buy a cup of coffee. But the only the the, the waiter gets a, a salary. He's not really invested. He's not really benefiting direct. But but that ecosystem is set and well established in South Africa. But when I travel to a, a Vietnam, I get into a local bus 
to take me to a local tourist attraction where I get to participate in Vietnamese tradition, as an example. Um, they take me to the local mining house where we get to see the people who are working and developing arts, craft, beautiful things. We really integrate and we get to see what's happening. But, but, I, but you're very right is that there's so much opportunity of the brilliant things we're doing in South Africa. How do we take normal business, elevate them to, an appoint, to, to a point where they become a source of, um, of revenue for local small business? So we're not just talking about the person who has a place in, in Kailicha, but we're also talking about um, the person who is developing a, a particular brand. We're talking about the, the SDZs, where there are all these um, small businesses that are being incubated by our very same government. It seems that we, we, thinking, we think broad, but how are we going to bridge that gap? What are the opportunities? And perhaps, CEO, and thank you, Minister, for your contribution. On top of Minister, how are we going to bridge that gap and really elevate all of society to participate? Well, I think one of the things that we, we, we always have to be conscious of as, as business is how are we impacting the local communities? How are we impacting the local entrepreneurs? And we had a conversation yesterday, interestingly, with Sun Parks. And we were talking about science and, and, and things like that in, in the national parks. And we are talking about how do you interpret science to make sure that the local community understand what's going on in the park in terms of biodiversity and many other things. Because if you leave communities behind, then they don't see tourism as, a, as something that they can benefit from. This is where we get issues around service delivery, we get issues around blockages of roads and so forth and so on. So making sure that the communities around the attractions are benefiting and deriving benefit, direct benefit from tourism is critical. And also making sure that us as businesses, and it's something that we always say to the business community, let's make sure that in whatever we do, it's inclusive, because if it's not inclusive, we cannot blame the communities not seeing the value in tourism, because the value is what they benefit from. So the beneficiation is quite important. The communities around the parks and around tourist attractions are quite important. The entrepreneurs that the minister was talking about, who are, who are in townships, who are coming up with new ideas, new experiences, how do we incorporate those things into our tourism offering is quite critical. And how do we make sure that our tourism is not franchised, so to speak, whereby you know, we, we, we say you come to South Africa, you go to four places. Geographical spread. We need to make sure that we break down those barriers and we start to introduce new things. And in 2018, when we were traveling throughout Europe, a lot of repeat travelers were saying to us, we want to come back to South Africa, but what's new? And, and you know, we can't talk about the same places over and over again. We need to be able to say, there's a new Dorpe, okay. and this is what it offers, and so forth and so on. Mm. Thank you so much. Three very different points, great engagement, and thank you for your contributions. It's been a long presentation. I hope that you have managed to stay uh, glued and interested. Thank you so much. And uh, from me, Zanella Morrison from CNBC Africa, thank you so much to our sponsors for allowing us to be part of this event. Do take care.